Hi friends, welcome to the Share and Invite uh, channel. Um, this is an Easter message, one that I gave yesterday at uh, the Vesper service where I, uh, I teach. And uh, I'd like for you to take a piece of paper out if you would and, and write down everything that you remember about the resurrection. Not necessarily the crucifixion, but the resurrection. What do you remember? Just write down, take a few minutes. Well, I'm going to read um, Matthew's account of the resurrection, and then I'll talk about it a bit. Now, after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the grave. And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred. You know, there is a fault line uh, that goes uh, there in Israel. I mean, you know, Syria and Turkey are also on that same fault line, and they just had earthquakes not long ago. But anyway, uh, an uh, earthquake had occurred for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. And his appearance was like lightning and his garment white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. And the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who has been crucified. He is not here, for he has risen. Just as he said, Come, see the place where he was lying. Go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you into Galilee. For you will see him. Behold, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran and reported to the disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they came up and took hold of his feet. That's the two women that were there. And they worshiped him. And Jesus said, do not be afraid. Go and take word to my brethren to leave for Galilee. And there they shall see me. And then once they are in, uh, oopsie, wrong, went over too far. And then as they were in Galilee, uh, the 11 disciples proceeded to Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had designated. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some were doubtful. And Jesus came up and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. As you go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until, even to the end of the age. Now, there are other accounts, but I like that one. And as I was thinking about Easter this year, I... Uh, and, and actually, oh, the resurrection specifically, uh, I began looking at some of my references. And one of my favorite uh, Scott, biblical scholars is Henry Black Blackaby. And he's written a series. Uh, this is called Experiencing the Cross, Your Greatest Opportunity for Victory Over Sin. And then, secondly, Experience, Experiencing the Resurrection, the everyday encounter that changes your life, and then experiencing the spirit, the power of Pentecost every day. And the thing I like about Blackaby, especially in this uh, book on the resurrection, is he takes comments made by uh, prophets, comments made by the disciples, James, Peter, John, uh, Luke, and he puts them together to show us that many times we just go over these verses and, and we don't connect them together. And you know, uh, the, the, um, the scripture many times doesn't become real uh, until, boom, something happens and you understand it. And that's the way it is, I think, with many of us when we study scripture. We're looking for something, but then suddenly God shows us something different. Well, in this experiencing the resurrection, uh, Henry and Melvin Blackaby says that the gospel includes the cross, the resurrection, and the Holy Spirit. 
because Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 17 through 19, if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Let me say right at the start, I'm having a little difficulty speaking and, and pronouncing words. It's because I'm just tired. It was a busy weekend and uh, I'm still tired. The resurrection of Christ is proof of Christ's victory over sin and salvation. The same power that God used to resurrect Jesus Christ from the grave is the power available to all who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. This means me and you, we get, we get the same power available. Philippians 3.10, to know him and the power of his resurrection. We can, we can do that. We can know the power of the resurrection of Jesus. Paul said in Ephesians 1, 17 to 23, the resurrection power, his prayer was that God would give them a spirit of wisdom, the church at Ephesus, and knowledge of him, talking about Jesus, that their eyes would be enlightened, they would know the hope of his calling, uh, of Christ's calling, know the riches of the glory of his inheritance, and know the greatness of God's power to us who believe and experience the mighty power that God has worked in Christ when he raised Christ from the dead and seated Jesus at his right hand. So we already have Paul talking about resurrection power. Ephesians 2, 4, but God being rich in mercy because of his great love, which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, for by grace you have been saved, and raised us up with Christ, and seated us with Christ in the heavenly places. We need to understand the resurrection of Christ from God's perspective. What is God's perspective? His perspective is that we perish. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, that whoever uh, believes in him, Jesus, should not perish. God's per per uh, perception of the resurrection is so that we will not perish, but have everlasting life. The cross put to death your old life, while the resurrection brings new life. And this new life of resurrection power is made for us through the Holy Spirit. At the day of Pentecost, Paul's sermon talked about the, the work of God, not the work of Jesus, because it's God's work through Jesus. But he said in his sermon, men of Israel... Hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did through Jesus in your midst, Jesus being delivered by the de determined purpose and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands. You've crucified and put to death this Jesus. This Jesus God raised up, of which we are all witnesses. Our benefit of resurrection power is, the, is not only a future event in heaven, but it's also to help us here on earth. And resurrection power is what we experience the moment we believe in Jesus. That's the Holy Spirit, resurrection power. We receive it the moment we believe in Jesus. Because of the resurrection of the disciples, because of the resurrection, the disciples were transformed. They were living a resurrected life. They were no longer afraid of death. They saw the risen Lord. And they gave their lives to share this good news of the resurrection. Now, I'm going to tell you about some, uh, the way they, did, they died. And would any of these disciples have died like this if Jesus were dead? I don't think so. James, the brother of John, was killed by a sword by the order of King Herod. John miraculously survived being put into a cauldron of boiling water and then later exiled to the island of Patmos. Peter crucified in Rome, 
Many say he was crucified upside down. Matthew killed by a sword in Ethiopia. James, the son of Alphaeus, was thrown from the temple and then beaten to death. Philip was hanged at Hierapolis in Phrygia, that's a region of Turkey. Bartholomew uh, was skinned alive. Andrew was bound to a cross and preached to his persecutors until he died. Thomas was run through with a lance in India. Jude was shot to death with arrows. Matthias was stoned and then beheaded. Mark died when he was dragged through the street uh, uh, of uh, Alexandria in Egypt. Now, again, I don't think these disciples would have died this way if they hadn't believed in the resurrection. It gave them resurrection power, the Spirit of God. And in Peter's sermon, uh, he said, I know God raised him up because it is impossible for him to be held in death's grip. The resurrection is the power of God to give new life. It's the power to bring you into a relationship with the Holy God. Resurrection power is available to all humans with only one condition. You must die to self so God can raise you to new life. Resurrection power is more than just going to heaven when we die. It's power and strength for today. It gives victory over sin. It tears down the wall that separates us from a holy God. It frees us from the dominion of darkness and brings us into the kingdom of light. Resurrection power provides a relationship with the risen Christ who loves us and gave his life for us. It's what opens the door to all that God has promised to those who put their trust in him. Page 98 of Blackaby in Melvin's book. What resurrection power do we receive now as a believer in Jesus Christ? We receive peace. Paul said in Romans 5, 1 and 2, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have access by faith into his grace, in whom we stand, and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. So the result of our faith, we have peace with God. And the word peace is used in the Bible 400 times, and it represents peace with God. Jesus brought peace around those that, uh, that he came in contact with. He said to the woman who washed his feet, your faith has saved you. Go in peace in Luke 7. He said to the woman who had a hemorrhage uh, for 12 years in Luke 8, he said to the woman, daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Uh, Mark said in Mark 4, he said to the raging storm on the Sea of Galilee, peace be still. John Wrote, wrote that uh, he said to the frightened disciples in the upper room, peace I give with you. And Blackby asked this question, why do so many people lack peace in their lives? It's because of sin. And the way you recover from that is to confess your sins to God. Because Paul said in Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So God brings peace. He offers forgiveness and a restored relationship through Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. Secondly, this resurrection life brings access to God. The peace of God brings us into a relationship with the Holy God. Uh, and uh, our access to God is through our belief in Jesus Christ. There's not any other way to get to God. It's granted only through uh, the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We have access. We also have joy. After the disciples watched Jesus ascend into heaven, they returned to Jerusalem with great joy, continual rejoicing and praising God in the temple. John said in 17, Jesus prayed to God that the disciples would have his joy. Why, it, if the resurrection didn't make any difference in their lives, why would anyone want to hear the gospel? This resurrection joy was proclaimed in the early church. Paul said, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. 
James said in James 1, 2, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Peter said in 1 Peter 1, 8, though now you do not see him, talking about Jesus, yet believing you rejoice with joy, inexpressible and full of glory. And John said in John 1, 4, these things we write to you that your joy may be full. So we have joy with forgiveness of sin, absolute peace with God, assurance of salvation and a home in heaven, victory over temptation to sin, and walk in fellowship with Christ. So resur resurrection life brings peace and access to God and joy and next power. Page 149 of Blackerby's book, he said, Jesus' last words to his disciples were, you shall receive power with the Holy, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Power. Resurrection power always has to do with life. Power that God used to raise Jesus Christ from the grave. And God has placed the same power within our lives. Paul said in Ephesians 3.20, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Philippians 3.10, that I may know him, Jesus, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. And so, you know, putting all of that together, it gives me anyway, a better understanding of the resurrection and the power that God used to resurrect Jesus. Next, after peace and access to God and joy and power comes resurrection authority. The risen Lord is within us as believers. He has authority over all things. He is Lord of our lives. And where Jesus is present, his authority and his power is present. And Jesus gave the Great Commission, I read it a few minutes ago, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go and make disciples. So Jesus has the right to your life. His heart is to seek and to save those who are lost. Then we have resur resurrection confidence. Isaiah said in uh, chapter 41, verse 10, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And Paul said in Romans 8, 31, If God's for us, who can be against us? So we do have confidence in the Lord, in God, in his resurrection power. And then... We are born again by the Spirit of God. We're transformed people. We're different from those who have not been born again. Then we have, besides peace, access, joy, power, authority, and confidence, we have resurrection hope. Hope in heaven, the eternal home of God. Heaven is the object of our hope. It's the future home of believers. So the hope of resurrection is our expectation. Our hope in heaven is not based on our abilities, but rather Christ's work on the cross and God's work in the resurrection. Emphasis here is the power that raised Jesus Christ from the grave is the same power that is at work in our lives. This resurrection power is the Holy Spirit, the same spirit that God gave Jesus at his baptism that drove him to the wilderness, that gave him power to heal in the miracles that he did, the power that raised him from the grave. You know, this is a whole package. The incarnation, the Holy Spirit coming upon Mary, the ministry of Jesus, the crucifixion, the resurrection, the ascension, and the pouring out of the Spirit is all one package. It is our gospel message. It's the purpose of Jesus coming to the world as a human to be a sacrifice for my sins, your sins, and to provide a relationship back to the Father and to send the Holy Spirit to be in us as believers to fulfill the mission that God has for us. The primary mission is to share this gospel message. The source of power of the Holy Spirit, prophesied in Isaiah 
uh, talking about Jesus, and the spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and strength, the spirit of knowledge and reverence of the Lord. Isaiah also said in 42, 1, Behold my servant, talking about Jesus, whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom my soul delights. God has put his spirit upon him, and he will bring forth justice to the nations. And so on. There's many, many more. Um, believers are filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, John records of what Jesus said. Chapter 14, verses 16 and 17. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he will be with you forever. That is the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, whom the world cannot receive because it does not behold him or know him. But you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. Luke said, in Acts 13, 52, and the disciples were constantly filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 3, 14, Paul's letter to Corinth, he said, the grace of God, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. He's talking about the Trinity. Peter said in 1 Peter 4, 13 and 14, to the degree that you share in the sufferings of Christ, keep on rejoicing so that also at the revelation of his glory, you may receive with exaltation. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you're blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. John said in John 16, seven and eight, records what Jesus said, but I tell you the truth. It is for your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, the Holy Spirit shall not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And the Holy Spirit, when he comes, will convict the world of sin and righteousness and judgment. In Romans 8, 11 and 14, Paul said, But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the Holy Spirit, he who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who indwells you. So resurrection power is the Holy Spirit that, wrote, that raised Jesus. And believers who have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior now have this Holy Spirit. They have the peace of God. They have the access of God. They have joy. They have power. They have authority and confidence and hope. And we have the greatest power on earth, the power of the resurrection. And that's the Holy Spirit. Wonderful Easter message for us today. Thank you for watching.